Hey, what is going on, guys? Rudelanel here, coming back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, now, uh, we've finally gotten through our little customization sort of mini-series, and now we're gonna move on to a little bit more we can do with some variables. Uh, if you guys had watched my Python tutorials, which is a series I did just before this one, uh, it's actually my first tutorial series, so hopefully it's not all that bad. <laughs> but, uh, near the end of this video series, uh, we started working with strings, and how we could manipulate those variables and that sort of things, and that sort of thing, anyway. And, uh, now we're gonna try and do that in batch. And, uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff that we can do here. Uh, let's get CMD open anyway, along with Notepad++, and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, now if I were to create a new script, I'll call mine, uh, script.bat. Get our normal script put together, and you know, in the last video, though, we took a look at someone else's code, and they had a pretty interesting way of, uh, enabling the delayed expansion where they capitalized, uh, all the beginning words, and I think that's kind of nice. It's a good style. It looks good. So, you know, it's kind of a good thing to look at other people's code. You can see some things and learn something new. <laughs> but alright, uh, let's actually see what we're going to do here. If I were to set a variable, I'll just call mine var, and I'll say, like, this is totally a string. So now we've got a string. If we were to echo that out, if we echo, I'm going to use my two exclamation points here and do some variable expansion. If we echo that out and I run script, says, this is totally a string. So that's awesome. But, well, let's say I wanted to get some information, or I wanted to get only a piece of that string out. I wanted to get a substring. That's what we call it. It's sub, because it's a piece inside of the string. Let's say I only wanted, um, totally. I only want that word here. So let's try and figure out, actually, the position that it's at. Because each character is, a uh, is it actually a character or a part of the string. We can get to a specific position and know where that actually starts. So let's try and try this out here. If, I, if T is considered the first character, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Okay, let's try 8. Because there is a certain syntax that we can use when we're trying to actually display the variable, or at least get the value of it. We can use a colon, which is the shift formation of the semicolon on your keyboard. It should be right beside the L key, and uh, right beside, like, the the apostrophe and the quotes there. We we'll use that one, and then we use the tilde, which is to the left of your one key on your keyboard, most likely. It's the shift formation of that key. And then we can actually put the position that we actually wanted to start at. So, I counted 8, so let's try what we get here. If I put in 8, we run that script, it says, totally a string. That's pretty cool. So what it does, actually, with that, though, is it gets that position from the end of, where, from the, end of the string. So if I were to run this at, like, 2, it's say is a totally a string. Is is totally a string because it goes to here. So it's one, two, two positions in, and it gets the rest of the string. Now we can actually decide how much more of it we want it to gather, though. If I start at eight again and I only want to get this totally, I want it to go to um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven more. So if I were to go from eight to eight plus seven, that'll be 15 in the position of the string. It says totally a string. And that's not what we wanted, though. We wanted only those seven here. So let's try it a different way. Let's try it with the seven and see if it works. We get totally. So we've learned something new here, though. If we get the position that we're starting at, we want to get the length of what we're trying to get afterwards. Because if we, if we were to use that 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, it still doesn't work. It doesn't actually get us to where we want it to go to. So it is a little bit strange, especially because it's in batch. But if you just use uh, the length of what you're trying to get from that position, you'll see something new here. So let's do 2 to 7. Is is t because it's from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it gets that amount. And there you go. Now we can, of course, get things from the beginning. If we just pass in 0 and we use uh, 4, from 0 to 4... So, one, two, three, four, it'll get this. It'll get the entirety of the word this. And there it is. There is this. <laughs> but we can, of course, use some negative numbers. Let's say we wanted to go from zero to negative five. And negative five is going to work from the back end of the string. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's go for one more. Let's get to the end of string here. This is totally A. This is totally A. And if we started from negative six, and actually went up six pieces, we get string. 
because we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're starting there, and then we're going to move 6 spaces forward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can manipulate and get pieces of your variable out. You can get uh, certain words and that sort of thing. You're able to actually get each individual character, especially if you wanted to. You could say 0 and 1 and get the first one. Now you can increment that 1, 2, get the next one. Oh, actually just 1, 1, remember because we're going to want here... Oh, sorry, that's still negative. That's probably the problem. H. Move the offset. Move it again. And you can keep incrementing through each position inside of your string. So you can do some interesting stuff here, but make sure you can recognize that when you're not you're using something negative, because that'll work from the end of the string, and uh, that sort of thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know this one can get a little bit complex if you don't exactly know the positioning of everything inside of your string, but we're going to try and learn uh, about the way we can manipulate the string even more in the later in the coming tutorials. So thanks again, though, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.